The following lesson is a presentation of PrepLogic's Learn Smart video training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart video training library, call 1-800-418-6789. One of the most difficult challenges for network administrators and security professionals today is how to keep unauthorized access out or blocked. In other words, how do we keep attackers from getting access to our internal network while at the same time allowing authenticated and valid remote users to be able to get into our system? This is the challenge of remote access. We'll look, take a look at some of the technologies and protocols and concepts and just basic guidelines to make sure valid users can get in while we keep out the bad guys. One of the first remote access protocols, which is actually also just another type of local area network protocol, it kind of crosses the boundaries, is 802.11x. This is actually a category for a network medium protocol. In other words, just like Ethernet and Token Ring are fundamental networking technologies that control how signals are transferred, the 802.11x family controls how wireless protocols work for wireless access. Now, this can be considered remote in the sense that there are no direct wires that are connecting, but it also is a great way to extend our common networks. And a lot of the security concerns that apply to generic remote access and VPNs and remote control software also applies to the 802.11x series or wireless networking in general. Now, there are several standards at work here. Let's take a look at 802.11b, also called Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi, or 802.11b, is the most popular wireless protocol right now. It's all over the place and has been for the past few years. It's relatively inexpensive, it's easy to implement and deploy, and people really, really like it. It even gives us a mod of speed of 11 megabits per second. Now, that's not as nice as fast Ethernet of 100 megabits, or even gigabit Ethernet of 1,000 megabits, but it's good enough for most systems, and it's excellent for laptops. I was just passing through a, a very popular airport here not too long ago and was able to get onto the internet from anywhere I sat in the terminals. It was great. So I was sitting right at the gate chatting with someone up until the last moment I had to walk onto a plane. Now that's one of the great benefits of wireless networking. 802.11x actually has a great range of about 800 feet. Now that's line of sight, not talking about buildings or wood or glass in between it. That's a pretty fairly good range for connecting to a network. The newer protocol is called 802.11a. This protocol not only is newer, it's also faster, 54 megabits, but it doesn't quite have the same range, about 100 feet. It'll be interesting to see how common or broad this technology is implemented, especially in local area networks. But I'm sure as demands for data transfer rates go through, we'll see this new standard supplant the older standard. Let's look at some generic concepts with wireless networking. The first is that it's, you know, it's really flexible and cheaper to implement than traditional uh, UTP or unshielded twisted pair networks. Now we're talking the traditional ethernet wires that you had to run through the ceiling or token ring, and heaven forbid it's much easier than a fiber optic. Just putting up a wireless hub and then having your different computers connect with a wireless network card can really save a lot of installation costs. It's increasingly popular because of that reason. It's fast, it's quick, especially in small offices, homes, or buildings where wiring just isn't quite appropriate. What's also interesting is that I can use external antennas and amplifiers to extend the range, up to 20 miles in some cases. I have to mention that we use the concept of an access point. The access point really refers to a wireless hub, if you will. This is a device that talks to all the various wireless components out there and connects them to the wired part of your network. We also have several modes when we're talking about wireless communication. The first is called infrastructure mode. In infrastructure mode, all of your wireless stations talk to the main network and to each other through access points. The other mode is called peer-to-peer, -peer, or ad hoc mode. In this mode, there is no access point. All of the various wireless stations talk directly to each other when they wish to communicate. So how does the 802.11 series stand up security-wise? Well, those are some of the primary concerns and issues with it. Now remember, security is not just protecting against hackers altering our data, data integrity, or seeing information they shouldn't, data privacy or confidentiality, but also maintaining the accessibility of data. So one of our concerns is interference, making sure that systems running the 802 series networks can get access. 
well, we immediately run into a problem. The 802.11b frequency is in the same range as your portable phones you use at home or sometimes in the office. So that can be an issue. Also, range is a critical aspect we need to look at. Some materials block the signal, and that has an effect on planning our network and making sure that access to our information is always maintained. Encryption is a key issue. We'll talk more about WEP in another section, but wireless encryption protocol is easily broken. And so still, as most products are implemented, there isn't very good encryption. Now that's changing as newer standards and new encryption methodologies are coming out, but traditional wireless products have had very poor encryption. And finally, access control. By default, most wireless products are implemented so that any wireless station can immediately use and connect to the network. Now this is bad even if someone can't look at private resources on our network, if all they can do is just use resources. Let me give a story about this. In the Atlanta airport, there's been operating over time a specific company that offered internet service. And they offered it on the third floor above a big open area, at the bottom of which was the food court in one of the specific terminals. It was possible to go and sit in the food court three levels below, start up and activate a wireless network card, and get access to this company's private internal network. And not just be able to look at the internal resources of this company, but use their internet connection, which they normally charged quite a bit of money to use, to get out to the internet as a whole. And it would be very common walking through the Atlanta airport to see people eating their food and taking advantage of free internet access. So how do we defend against these security holes? The first, better encryption. We need to make sure that we're upgrading our access point software. Remember the access point or AP is our equivalent of our wireless hub. We need to upgrade its software or BIOS so that it uses the latest encryption. And the same thing with all the network cards, the wireless network cards. We need to make sure those drivers use the best encryption. We might even consider establishing Kerberos or an IPsec encryption underneath for that particular network. It's also a good idea to separate our wired from our wireless network through a firewall. This is just an additional layer so that if someone does crack our access control and gets access and is able to actually participate in our wireless network, they would still probably be blocked from getting access to the system as a whole. Kerberos is probably one of our best bets to be able to perform this. And finally, we need to make sure we're testing for the appropriate range and access. In other words, we need to test that not only our own valid users can get access to this wireless network from anywhere in our building or the surrounding grounds that they should, but we also need to go beyond our building and see if anybody on the street, say, can get access to our network.